What is up, guys? We are at Arizona at the Arizona Comic Book and Art Festival. We're gonna go in. We're gonna check it out. It's the first, the first time. Yes, yeah, the first time that they're doing it. We're here in Arizona. We're out of out of our home state, right? We're out of Cali and in Phoenix. Yep. So, so let's, let's check, check it out. It out. It's gonna be a lot of really cool art today. So we're stoked. Like, like the show here or just life in general? Oh, life in general. How you been? How's everything? We try to keep up. I know we follow you on Instagram. You do a lot of posts. For yeah. Um, well, my, my answer to that is uh, I have supreme confidence. And I feel like I'm a self-made person. That means no matter what happens on the outside, internally, I'm extremely happy. The world does not make you happy. Yeah. But it has, so it has to come from someplace else. And because I love what I do so much, and uh, my whole life is tied into the kind of work that I do, it's, it's kind of like a paradise. That's what it feels like. So it's a great feeling to have that. I wish everyone had that. But I, I, I don't, I, I think it's a fairly rare quality. Um, when I meet people that don't that don't even have anything remotely like this, I like to encourage them in a way that, of course, you can do it, but they have to be around somebody who has it, because you can't you can't how can you pass it on to somebody if you don't have it yourself? Yeah. So if they hang around with you, they get a taste of what it's like to be something they could be if they could just you know click a couple switches in their head. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's exciting. I love, I love doing, being able to help people. My sister told me a long time ago when I was kind of going through some stuff, she said, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. So you have to find a way to kind of, you know, you have to, you have to be happy, do what you're doing, make sure that you're happy so that you can help everybody else. You know? And maybe not save everyone, but at least anyone around you gets inspired. You know, has some kind of influence or you have some influence on them to help them out and they're going to do it. Well, I'm happy to hear that because that, that's, yeah, wow. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking back to some of the shows I've been to over the decades, and uh, I've met some remarkable people. That this touched me very deeply. So the idea, the idea that you, what you can do here is like uh, some kind of a, a magical therapy for somebody, uh, it's, that's what it did for me, that's what comics did for me. Whatever's going on in my life, if I go back and read a certain Jack Kirby comic book from the 60s, that does more for me than anything I can I can think of in life. Yeah. It's such a calming place. It's such a wonderful feeling to have washed over you. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's, that's what happens when I look at these, these old books that made me what I am, that wanted to be, become what I am. That's a great feeling. We like talking to especially a lot of like the uh, like independent guys who haven't really done anything for Marvel and DC. Well, I've kind of done their own thing. Well, I like that idea because these guys have as much to say as anybody, and their perspective is going to be different. So when you, you interview these people, that's the great thing about the web. You do, you, we do these things, and it gets disseminated to God knows who. Maybe thousands and thousands of people. And every time you see something like that, there's a little bit of a change going on, a little bit of a positive change, which I think you know a lot because you do this. Yeah. You do these podcasts. 
Uh, so what a, it's a great feeling. I just really like doing that stuff. This is it's, it's as important to me as doing this stuff. Yeah. The talking to people and giving them an idea of, of uh, what's possible if they if they if they think things are, are not possible. I, I can tell them that it is not impossible. So I love doing that. Okay. You get a lot of that from me. Next show I'm doing after this is a Cottonwood, a little tiny show, and then uh, El Paso. Oh, that's supposedly a big show, and then Tucson, and then Phoenix Pond. It's got a little like Phoenix is too new. I'm from New York, so I like a little bit of stank on my, you know, on my city, you know. Yes. But Tucson's a lot, a little older. Architecture's older. It's, a little, it's got a little stank, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. That I like. It's like I modeled it off of uh, like the Phoenix Sioux. They're just stuff. I spent some money on it. It's really nice. And then I have rocking chairs, you know, and I, have, and I just hang out, smoke cigars, watch my turtles. That's awesome. <laughs> and I have like, you know, like uh, hummingbird feeders and uh, stuff like that. The, the so name's like, Leonardo Michelangelo? The or the name of the turtles? No, the, the, they're two females. So it's Alex, Alex. Uh, Alice and Trixie from the Honeymooners. <laughs> oh, nice. And then uh, Alice had babies, so now I have four. So the two of them are Miyagi and Sato. Yeah. So, and I don't know, if, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're male or females yet. You gotta wait. Uh, my turtles are gonna be around for, especially now the babies are only two years old. So they'll be around for another 80 years. That's so. awesome. Damn. Like, hey, it's better than you live with Miyagi and Sato. That's yeah. <laughs> but if they go, in, if they turn into males, I have to get rid of them. I can't keep male and females together. So I'm hoping they stay. Do they fight? Yeah, the males are really aggressive. Oh. So, and they'll constantly be fighting. So you have to separate them. So. That's crazy. So hopefully, I want to, I want them to turn into females. So they hopefully can all they stay will. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Cool, cool. Right. action movie like every bad action movie not just like Rambo or Commando like all the B movie that you go to the video store and Blockbuster so it's like all those movies crammed into one thing so it's like they kill his wife it's a mullet uh, his guy cut off short cut off shirt he's going after everybody for revenge and yeah all the fun that goes with it super violent you know language like everything you see in those old movies that I love so it's kind of like a love note to Terrible B action movie okay. of the 80s. Yeah. Is it uh, completed yet? Or, uh, uh, I'm working on the third about? issue. So that's going to be a Kickstarter in probably May, June. And yeah, the first two issues are out. Yeah. So that's issue one, issue two. So yeah, the, the final part of it is coming. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. So we have, we both have a phone that's the same types of, of like 70s and 80s action movies and like 90s Hong Kong movies. And we're buddies and both mostly artists and both write sometimes and uh, kind of got the idea like, hey, whenever I think of these movies, I think of this dude and, and we wanted to work together for a while anyway. So the book, the simple book premise is that it's like a revenge story that's gonna have cyborgs and ninjas and keep it as not as deep, not deep at all. It's gonna be style and fun and uh, like a real comic book. Yeah. Know, like, like the cool art, action, and, and fun. Like, yeah, like whatever we want to do, like robot, you know, yeah, like cyborgs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. an element of freedom to it where it's like, oh, we want to fight ninjas. And we're like, let's do three pages of fighting ninjas. Yeah. So keeping it like stuff that we would want to see in a yeah. book it probably sounds cliche, but I don't really see a lot of people making the books that I want to make. 
Um, and we both want to make yeah. those books. So that's it. So if you're into kind of indie art, but that's got history to it, and action movies, kung fu movies, 80s ninjas movies, this is probably going to be your, your kind of bag. is like uh, it's got public domain characters but it's kind of like a throwback to the 80s black and white explosion like Ninja Turtles and stuff like that so it has a lot of different sensibilities like there's golden age stuff but there's also like uh, 80s there's 80s stuff and then there's kind of like underground stuff because you know there's a lot of violence and blood and dicks and, you know all that kind of stuff so that's basically what I think Here's Sojourners. It's a 29 page Space Monkey adventure. I'll read you the back. The Simeon Space Odyssey, the intrepid crew of the Sojourner 2, race time to complete their vital world saving super secret mission. Here's some interior oh, art for you. Cool. Very retro sci fi and European comics influences. Yeah. I, I like the uh, selection to go with that long page style, man. Thanks, that man. landscape. Nice. There's all the characters there. This is Technopolis, it's one of, my, one of my other titles. The City of Dreams and Nightmares. To get his lost sister back, a haunted young boy must defy his family, deny the doubt, face all odds, and solve the dark mystery of his utopian city with just his cat and a jetpack. So, this one is all about, uh, you know, he wakes up, he has a recurring nightmare about waking up with his house on fire the night that his sister disappeared, so he's sort of obsessed with solving the mystery of her disappearance sister in the middle of the night. But nobody believes that's what happens. Okay. I think he's making it up because he's a little kid, so. Uh, went to like this like comic book shop and uh, it's all like the comic book shop only like sell like European comic books. But they have like in the in the front of the store they have like all these like fucking like tales like full of Kaliman. You know like, like Kaliman? Kaliman was like a comic book from uh, Mexico in the in the eighties. Okay. Okay. Actually. Oh, oh, sure. okay. No, no, no. no. Right. Yeah, I'm take I'm fucking up. <laughs> oh, hold on, let me, let me, uh... I gotta look that shit up now. Dude, it's not like, when I was a kid, like, they, they used to like, like, sell this in Venezuela in, uh, in the kiosk. So it was like Caliman, Aguila Solitaria, all these like Mexican comics, right? And that like, that like, amazing. You pick them all up? Well, my, yeah, like a bunch of them. I see the fucking covers. Shit, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> El hombre increíble. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get oh, this. I know. It's simple story, because it's all American. But when I was the first time in the day, I was like, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say El bilingüe es muy... Uh, no, yo, yo, yo antes de mudarme aquí a Arizona viví en Miami. En Miami si no habla español está de acuerdo. No, está yo, por el acento, ¿no? El, el dialecto que ellos hablan es, más, es diferente. Yo, eh, 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 en la escuela de mi hija había 24 ah, alumnos. 23 eran de Venezuela. ¡Ay! <risa> Dude. I'm 
important for the show, you know? It's like the, the, the art is important to everyone who walks in the door is here because they love comics and not because they're looking to like get William Shatner to sign their, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, I really appreciate that. But is William Shatner here? No. Let's <laughs> kidding. That's like one of the, so I, uh, I share a studio with the guy who put the show on, Ryan Cody. And like his whole thing is like, yeah, man, none of that. Like, no, no celebrities, no like. Yeah. You know, he's not trying to be shitty or exclusionary, but it's just like I want this to be about comics. You know. So look, man, if uh, Shatner was making comic books, he could come here and sell his comics. But we're not gonna put him off in some corner where you know, like, people can get in the line. Like, he'd have to get a booth and have his comics out just like everybody else. So that I appreciate about the show. Like, we're really trying to like. Yeah, even the guy, even the so-called like special guests are like totally on the same aisles as the rest of us. They're not over in some corner. Right. Oh, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like, yeah. Move. It's just about the art and the quality of the work, you know? Like, we're all here because we love making comics. Where in Santa Ana are you? I'm over there on, uh, like, by Harbor and McFadden. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, we're uh, closer to, like, where Fitz Intermediate is, if you kind of know that area. Uh, I know like, a bit. Los Amigos like, High School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my yeah. buddy lived in a, lived out there for a while, like, um, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to shit he was like on 13th and something i want to say i don't remember exactly but yeah and then uh this girl i dated knew some people who owned a gallery in santa Ana. they would do like their their first friday kind of art night thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. he had a space there and so i used to hang out like that was like that, that it wasn't there when i was a kid man i would love that shit you know there's a uh there's a little store they did they had a uh, jaime hernandez there like a few weeks ago nice, and i'd be like holy jaime. shit then uh, fucking end up uh, needing to work, so I missed that shit. But I was like, ah, but I've met him and uh, his brother a few times. Yeah, yeah. Fucking cool as hell, man. Yeah, I do like Latino you know, Comic Expo in uh, in Long Beach, and uh, I mean, I've, 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 well, I've, you know, there was one in Modesto and one in uh, in San Jose, and so. Um, but I, I met them. I think I met them in San Jose the first time. But like, yeah, those guys are great. But yeah, they'll, they'll show up for like, like yeah, stuff like that, where they're like, yeah, it's cool, like, you know. We'll do your like little show. And, yeah, uh, I, I still have uh, Jaime. Well, both of them are actually nice enough. I went through like a Batman kick many years ago. Jaime actually drew a Batman for me. Oh, very cool. So I was like, holy shit. And uh, I was digging through my boxes not that long ago when I, when I came up on it. I was like, oh man, I have fucking legends in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had a Hopi for me in my sketchbook. We were just we were in a show in Ohio together and he was kind of bored. But yeah, those guys are like fantastic. They're, like, and they're comic real, fans too. Yeah, yeah, real down to earth. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the show in the, I think it was the one in San Jose, and like, I was one of the old, like, we were, we were all staying in the same hotel, and everyone else went off to do something, and like, those guys were just chilling in the bar, and I was just walking through, and they were like, oh, so come here. And I'm like, okay, and like, they, they were like, they sat me down and started grilling me about the comics I like and stuff. They're like, well, what are you reading these days? What do you like, man? What got you into comics? I'm like, shit, you know, like, uh, I'm doing, you know that Suicide Squad kills the Justice League game? Yeah. I'm doing Suicide Squad kills. Arkham Asylum, like it's a prequel, okay. and it's gonna come out when the game comes out. Like you buy the comic, you get a skin or whatever. Yeah, one of those. They, they started. They got so big with that Fortnite. Yeah. Like they were like, hey, we gotta get more of it. And then I got a got a book called In Hell We Fight, coming from Image. Okay. Which is about these three kids that are in hell that find an angel, and they decide they're it's gonna. Silver coin. Oh yeah, we we, we crossed over with silver coin. Oh so. shit, but that's it's, awesome. Um, yeah. it, it's it's like. It's not a kid's comic because it's in hell, but it's kind of like a fun adventure comic. Uh, it's a kid's comic. Kids are in it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we use a little bit of bad words, but it's not its not as adult as Chew. Okay. But that's coming in like far. How much is this? Yeah. Yeah. 
trying to get the, the book. Goal is to get the book in everybody's yeah, hands. In, in the, as many people's hands as possible. All right. So what do we got here? We got Flying Somnia. Flying Somnia, it's a book on imagination and the power of imagination. It's about a helmet that has the power to materialize imagination. So it's like a weapon. It's actually written for a younger audience. And here I have red robotic enhanced device. This one in particular is inspired by the little red riding hood. And it's like, what would what would happen if the wolf actually taken over the world? And it's kind of like, like Mad Max meets, uh, what would be the name, a Kill Bill okay. or Terminator. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a, an assassin that went back and fought. So that's when they're creating her. So this one you would say is more uh, children oriented. Yeah. Than the yeah. More, uh, yeah. Oriented. yeah. So it's like it started. It started more like to be children oriented, and then I was like, no, I, I gotta make it. Like, yo, so let me like show you uh, some of the pages I'm working on right now for book two. It gets bloody. There's like a fight right there. So she's fighting the wolf, and then. We get some, we get, we get nasty. Oh, damn. And then we get. <laughs> that is dope right there, dude. Thank you. That is so dope. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't think it's that good of a marketing strategy. <laughs> some kid was like, some guy came up to us and he's like, yeah, it's on Instagram. And it's that guy eating a lot. Like, Does it make you want to buy a book when you see Eric <laughs> eating while someone's getting sodomized on the side? And, <laughs> It makes me want to check it out. I just want to look and flip the website. I want to make sure this guy keeps eating. What kind of mind does this guy, what kind of creation does he have? It's, it's, it's not working, but you know what? It gets more hits than any other yeah, yeah, right. All the foodies are anything. Yeah. This size building times like seven or eight, oh, and shit. it's nothing but video game sellers. Okay. So you have everything from like Famicom, Super Famicom, Atari, even up to like the modern stuff. And people have some like crystal stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's this no nothing little RPG for the PlayStation One. It's called Dragon Seed. It's kind of like. Um, Monster Rancher. Oh, so you're saying it's like Dragon Warrior Monsters type shit, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, so I bought that game when it first came out, like nothing. Of course, I sold it, and it's like, I'll pick it up later when it's like the same price I bought it for. It's like the 60 something. Goes up to like 100. Bought it again. Had to sell it, but that's because I was in like money trouble, so that makes sense, right? Yeah. Bought it again, and it goes up to like around 100, like 150 ish. And I'm like, I like it too much, but like, why couldn't it be like the 60 when I bought it the first time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it's only shit like that that you don't really anticipate coming up, like like wow, like shit like Pokemon, you know for sure, Mario's for sure, but just like those little like weird ass games that you play maybe once. There was one game I don't remember the fucking name of it. I rented a video game uh, back when like you know you had to go into the, movie, the video store and you, know, you couldn't afford it. That's how I did it. That's how I gamed. That's the only because I couldn't I couldn't afford the system. My godfather would actually let me borrow his, and so I would play him on there. I'd go to the video store, rent him, give him back his PlayStation. You can imagine he was so cool. He let me borrow a whole PlayStation. But there was one game that I ended up picking up by total accident. So it was the wrong game inside of that box. So when I told the lady, at the, I, when I returned it, I told the lady at the school, at the videos, I said, look, I didn't do it, but somebody else put the wrong game back in here. But that game is really awesome. And so like, you might want to like just relabel it. And so she, I'd been going there for years, so she trusted me, so she knew that I, and I wasn't a bad kid. And I told dude, I can't afford video games, so it's like I can't even buy a fake one, another one to put to replace it with. But I don't know what it was, but it was almost like a Zelda game. I've never been able to find a name, and I don't remember what it. I remember I had like the best fucking time playing. It. I swear, it was just, and I, I to this day I've never seen a screenshot, a picture, nothing. That I'm like, the moment I see it, I'm gonna yell. I'm like, that's fucking it. It starts off on the ship. The kid ends up on a on a land, like I don't know, and then and then it looks almost like a Zelda type game, but it looked like a step above Zelda as far as like the design goes. And like a, I wanna say it was probably PlayStation. Look up look up a game called Alundra. It's like A L or it's like A L L U N D R A. Wow. My right. entire freaking life, dude, I've never been able to get that fucking it's this one. It is yeah, it's that one. What the hell?
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I might be able to even do you one better. So there's a place that you guys are around here that's actually straight up of, uh, off of um, I-17. It's called Bookman's. It's up off uh, 19th Avenue in Northern. If you go over there, I think they either have a Lundra number one, which is that one, or they have the second one. They have one of the two, I know. The Bookman's? Yeah. We can go there, guys. I'll take you guys there. That place is dope. Dude, it's like this, is, it's like this is fucking badass. Yeah, this is it. Otherwise, it's kind of funny because the mailboxes. boxes. One thing I've always said is that if we come up with like time travel, nobody's going to use it to like fix, fix historical things. It's to go back in time to rob our past selves of these things that like cost hundreds of dollars now. It's yeah. like you don't need that. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. That's a wrap. Yes. What a great show. Yes. We've got a lot of awesome art. We've talked to a lot of creators. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot of really like, cool stuff here, man. Thank you so much to all the creators that we talked to, the event coordinators, everybody who worked here. Talked to Aiden. Um, apparently his father's the one that set up the whole Arizona Comics Art Festival, so big major shout out to them. You guys did a fantastic job, honestly, real intimate. So much amazing stuff, amazing vendors. It was, dude, I, I, I I'm, am I'm happy. so stoked. Good yeah. time. I'm so Good happy time. that we came. It was worth the drive, so thank you guys. Yeah, out.